Hello, BookTube. Yesterday I mentioned that the BookTube channel, Not Just Book Reviews, uh, decided to do Poetry Monday and <laughs> unleashed the chaos of the dogs because as soon as I saw that, I wanted to do a poem on Monday myself. Uh, I want to link to a video that Not Just Book Reviews did, I think more recently than that, I think it came out today, uh, called The Life and Death of, uh, I think, The Birth and Death of a Star Wars Fan, or The Life and Death of a Star Wars Fan, something like that, uh, that... It's, it's really clever. You have to see it for yourself. I'll leave a link to the video down below. If you have been irritated uh, by the slow, steady degradation of uh, your beloved Star Wars franchise by a bunch of Visigoths who don't understand it and are clearly in it for the money, and if you've also been irritated by the, the way that commentary on that those changes in Star Wars has become a football in the culture wars so that it's almost boiled down to if you like, if you don't like the Last Jedi, then you will also you also have to identify as a Trump supporter. If that also irritates you that that the whole critical discussion of what's happening to this franchise has been politically co-opted, if those two things bother you together, boy oh boy, has not just Booker Hughes made a video for you. It's only five minutes long, and it it perfectly encapsulates. What I would argue are probably the frustrations of tens of millions of Star Wars fans. And it is without any politi politics one way or another. It is not part of the culture war. It is simply a fan's reactions over time. Really, really good stuff. Uh, not just book reviews did not do a Poetry Tuesday, uh, but my uh, my likings are, <laughs> are already engaged. So I'm going to do a Poetry Tuesday. The only other poem I saw today was a poem that was read by Hannah at Hannah's Books. She did a video uh, talking about basically, what do we do with Russian classics during the, these last 10 days of Russian news with with the, the dictator of Russia openly threatening nuclear war? What do we do with Russian classics? Hannah had long planned a read-along of War and Peace. What do you do with a read-along of War and Peace if, if the news is the way it is these days? Uh, and she throws the question open. I'll leave a link to her video, too. You should go and, you know, listen to... To what she has to say it's incredibly thoughtful as always and then if ever there was a use if ever there was a time for a booktube videos comment section to come to life with people just discussing what do we do how would you feel about doing a read-along of a great russian classic when a, a russia's current president who claims that classic is one of his favorite books is threatening the devastation of a free democratic country and also the devastation of the rest of the species what do you do with that conflict feel free to go to to her channel watch that video and then give her your thoughts um, and she closed that video that she did by by reciting a poem uh, but as far as i know nobody else has done poetry on a tuesday not even your precious aaron facer maybe aaron just doesn't like poetry all that much <laughs> but i'm going to read you a poem today on poetry tuesday maybe i'll read your poem every day this week it's a free country, right? For now, I can if I want to. And we're going to go once again to the Norton Anthology of Poetry. I've been, I've been, I just working my way through this bits and pieces, but I hit, I hit a, a really good jag of reading here. So, uh, and we're going to go back in time. I read you something relatively recent. An author who's just recent, Robert Graves, just recently. I've, I've read a, a more recent people. Now we're going to go back to Shakespeare's day and to someone who may have been Shakespeare's friend, uh, the author Samuel Daniel who is not known anymore. He's hardly anthologized anymore. There are no biographies of him. There ought to be. We have an absolute mountain of documentary evidence for him compared to, for instance, Shakespeare, who has 5,000 biographies. We, there's been no big, as far as I know, no big popular biography of Samuel Daniel, even though he was well known to all of the literary figures of his day. They, they influenced his writing. He influenced their writing. There was all sorts of borrowing or stealing going in both directions. He was almost certainly known uh, to a lot of the major players in Elizabethan literature. He was certainly known to uh, the Sidney family, to the Countess of Pembroke. Uh, he worked for her, joined her household, for Pete's sake. After a very interesting exchange, a very interesting, it could have gone disastrously wrong, the way that he actually came to the attention of the sister of Philip Sidney. Uh, was the inclusion of, of some of his poems in a work where she that she didn't want published at all, much less with his poems in it in addition to her brother's. And that could have gone horribly. And instead, it, it turned out really well. And there's a story behind that that could be 
artistically inferred in a very entertaining biography, but no one's done it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to read you a Samuel Daniel poem, probably the first Samuel Daniel poem read on book two. <laughs> and this is called Are They Shadows? Are they shadows that we see? And can shadows give pleasure give? Pleasures only shadows be, cast by bodies we conceive, and are made the things we deem in those figures which they seem. But these pleasures vanish fast, which by shadows are expressed. Pleasures are not, if they last, in that in their passing is their best. Glory is most bright and gay in a flash, and so away. Feed apace, then, greedy eyes, on the wonders you behold. Take it sudden as it flies, though you take it not to hold. When your eyes have done their part, thought must lengthen it in the heart. Uh, and in that you can see what those of you who have studied the period at all will know. The Elizabethans were wonderful at playing with language. They loved to fold it and then fold it on itself and then fold it a little bit more. We could spend a whole day dissecting the rhythmic game playing that's going on just in a little ditty like that that probably took Samuel Daniel an hour to write. We could dissect that all day. And it's lovely. And its sentiments are lovely as well, you know, which is that enjoyment comes and then flashes away. It's our thoughts that lengthen it. It's our thoughts that even make it what it is. Just lovely. Makes me want to read a lot more Samuel Daniel. Fortunately, this Norton anthology of poetry was done long enough ago so that there's plenty of him in here. I will probably read a lot more. And will we do a poem on Wednesday? <laughs> Any of you care to join me in a poem on Wednesday? I'm thinking yes. <laughs> so I will wrap this up for now, and we will see what we can find tomorrow. Thank you, Booktube.